Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God to all of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. reading from the book of Isaiah. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by, my, by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you. Nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn 
with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. Amen. At first glance, it may seem as if we move from a brilliant red and green of the past season to the unimaginative gray of deep winter today from the the festive presentation of gifts at the Savior's manger to the recycling bin full of cardboard boxes and empty soda bottles from a grand Christmas Eve to the slow grind of ordinary time. After all, just about anything, I think, would seem ordinary after what has happened over the last season. Angels, shepherds, cave, manger, virgin wise men, and the many dreams. The nave in some way seems a little more subdued without the Christmas decorations and the the brilliant poinsettias. Young people are back in school, college students headed that way or maybe already there, and your Christmas tree surely kicked to the curb by now, but there may be a few lingering few lingering uh, decorations in your hallway that haven't quite made it to the boxes and your attic. But this movement from from Christmas to the epiphany through the baptism of our Lord, for me, it always seems so abrupt. And I think that's that's partly what makes it so difficult about this movement from the festive to the ferial, its abruptness. I'd love just a little cushion. The gospel writer might have included just a little bit more about the Holy Family's sojourn in Egypt or something about Jesus accompanying Joseph on his first kitchen remodeling effort. Or or, or maybe a story about Jesus when he decided to leave home as an adult. All the factors that went into making that decision. Something that lets us watch Jesus grow into his full-size Son of God high tops to have him step from swaddling clothes and right into plain white boxers without so much as a nod to childhood, it leaves me longing for a segue that makes the ordinary just a bit more tolerable. But no such luck. We have the story the Holy Spirit has provided, and so we find ourselves at the edge of the water, the River Jordan, watching a scene unfold that will assemble the extraordinary from the bits and pieces of the ordinary. Earth, wind, fire, and water, they all feature in this tableau, as do the the law, the prophets, the gates of heaven, the spirit, the doting voice of the Father. The people have gathered on dry land, dry land to hear the prophet preach. In the beginning, dry land was separated from the water. There was dry land at the top of Mount Ararat, 
provide a temporary resting place for all of creation as the waters of chaos and the flood receded. The path to freedom from slavery in Egypt was paved with a dry riverbed separated from the waters of the Red Sea. The landscape, it's quite familiar. It's even ordinary. Many do not think twice about standing on dry ground at the river's edge, straining to hear the preacher. And they hear him say, repent. Honor the law. Walk through the water to dry land. He's the one who's able to see the preacher, to see the story of the past as present need for the people of God. Repent and believe and walk through the water to dry ground. Amos speaks afresh in John the Baptist. Do not extort money from everyone by, by threats of false accusation. Isaiah comes alive in the, in the words of the preacher. Every valley shall be lifted, every mountain and hill made low. These were ordinary images. But Sabbath school had so drilled them drill these words of the prophet into their minds that they knew them by heart. They were in that sense ordinary, but in John, suddenly extraordinary. As the people begin to see some color in the gray, one remembers the passing of Elijah's mantle to Elisha. The one who's coming will make all things new. And I will be his servant, says John, and will gladly serve him all my days. I baptize you with water, but, but he will baptize you with fire and the Spirit. His discerning judgment will separate wheat from husk, and the winnowing fork is in his hand. Jesus, with these words, receives the mantle of the prophets. The whole giving of the law an anticipates this moment, when it would be set squarely on the Messiah's shoulders, Jesus will be its fulfillment. And they are immersed in cold water as they repent and receive the new life declared in John's preaching. Jesus is among those who are baptized. And in the prayer that follows, the heavens open, just as they did for the psalmist in Psalm 78, just as they did for Ezekiel in his first chapter, just as they did for Jacob and the ladder that pierces heaven's gate. The people knew all those stories. They were ordinary, and yet to watch and see heaven's gate open over Jesus, the Messiah, to see the Spirit descend on him, this was extraordinary. And the gray tone palette slowly begins to include the long-awaited yellows and blues and greens and, and reds of a renewed creation. And then the voice from heaven. Again, this was rather ordinary. The story of the people of God is peppered with a voice from heaven. A voice from heaven speaks to the bereaved Hagar as she laments what she believes will be the loss of her son. Moses is reminded in Deuteronomy of the many times a voice from heaven spoke to him. David sings a song of celebration of deliverance from his enemies in which he remembers a thundering voice from heaven. The psalmist often listens for this voice. Jeremiah knows the qualities of this voice. Daniel receives a warning for King Nebuchadnezzar from this voice, the voice from heaven. We know that voice. It is quite ordinary. But what God has to say today, this was extraordinary and actually brings the picture to full color. You are my son, the beloved, and with you I'm well pleased. It's as if all creation exhales with this declaration. You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The words are ordinary. You know the love of a father for a son. You know the look a mother has as she holds her newborn. 
You know the pride a father has when his daughter stands as a young woman for the first time, always wonderful, still ordinary. But here the ordinary becomes extraordinary. As God the Father names his son and points him out to all creation, the, the earth, wind, the fire, the water of all creation trembles as it hears God declare he's well pleased with his son. And this declaration, can you hear it? It stirs, it stirs the ancient memory of those first moments in the beginning when God, day after day after day, shouted, Tov! Good! It was good. It was very good after the creation of dry land and light and, and water and every living creature. Tov! You are my son, the beloved. With you I'm well pleased. This scene, given the landscape of the story of the people of God, it's miraculously ordinary. Every feature of this tableau you've seen before, but today they come together and offer a promise of new life, the promise of a creation renewed by the judgment and discerning love of God the Father. It's been the custom for centuries of the church to baptize on this day to renew our baptismal vows. We're going to do so just now. Lisa and Scarlett are, are coming and presenting themselves for baptism. And we do this not because the, the baptism of John is somehow the same rite we practice today. It's not. But rather because in the baptism of Jesus, we see a hallowing of all creation. And we see the pleasure of God in things set right. The baptism of the church, it grafts each one brought to these waters into the new creation. It grafts each one into the body of Christ. If that's so, and if we understand that in his body there is no sin, so are our sins forgiven. If that's so, and if we understand that in his body there is no place for dishonesty, so our hearts are conformed to truth and truth-telling. If that's so, and in his body there can be no enmity, so then every fit of jealousy, every hate is removed as our souls are fit for heaven and prepared for life, even now, in the kingdom of heaven. why we baptize on this day. It's why we remember our own baptisms on this day. Now, lest the glory and majesty, even wonder, of this moment be, be lost somehow in, in plain words or long-winded words, linger with me just a moment longer here at the water's edge to marvel to marvel at the whole of the tableau. You know, you didn't ask anything more about that declaration God made. I suggested that, that, that creation recognizes that first tov, that first good, God's declaration of pleasure when God says of Jesus, this is my beloved son. But have we heard that phrase before? My beloved its echo somehow rings true. Saul and Jonathan were beloved of one another. The tribe of Benjamin, holding the promise of the people of God, they were des was described as beloved of the Lord. Many a wife in Holy Scripture is described as beloved of her husband. And then, of course, there is, there is the beloved. Remember this? The reason for the, the whole entire book of the Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon, it's included there wholly for that reason, that love poetry. The beloved is pursued by the lover, adored, sacrificed for, loved above all others. Here, lean in just for a moment and listen to the banter between the lover and the beloved. Hear the secret conversation between God the Father and God the Son. Chapter 2. My beloved, behold, he's coming. 
climbing on the mountains, leaping on the hills. My beloved is mine and I am his. He pastures his flock among the lilies. Awake, O north wind, and come, wind of the south. Make my garden breathe out fragrance. Let its spices be wafted abroad. May my beloved come into his garden and eat his choice of fruits. And so the Father and the Son sing and dance and revel in the garden of the Holy Spirit. For more on this, watch carefully the, the lyric of the anthem that the choir will sing at the offertory. All creation watches as Eden is restored. And notice, I wonder, did you, when you came up out of the waters of baptism, it was said that you were now a member of Christ's body. Did you notice how the priest put a hand on your forehead and marked you with the seal of the Spirit, naming you as Christ's own forever? D did you notice that what was said of Christ by God at the river's edge is now said of you? This is my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. You are God's beloved. You are his heart's desire. You are the one for whom he left heaven, seeking you on the hills, in the valleys, in the darkest corners where you sought to hide. You are God's beloved. So come and turn this day. Embrace this passionate love of God. It may be that ordinary time is soon upon us, and it may be that you've seen all of this before. It may be that no one feature of this scene is compelling in and of itself, but together they point you and me to new life, to the hope of salvation, to the coming kingdom, and to the one who loved you even before you were conceived in your mother's womb. This is my beloved. You are my beloved in whom I am well pleased. Amen. assembly is invited to remain seated while I invite the baptismal parties forward to the altar rail. Baptism will now be presented. I present Lisa to receive the sacrament of baptism. Lisa, do you desire to be baptized? Yes. And the candidates for holy baptism will be presented. I present the scarlet and red rosary to receive the sacrament of baptism. Turning the page. Parents and godparents of Scarlet, will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present? is brought up in the Christian faith and life. <laughs> Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. And all together, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? 
Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? And do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? And do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? And will the assembly please stand? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? believe in God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. O Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. O Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. O Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. O Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others. In the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. And bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever.
in the assembly are invited to come forward at this time. Please make your way to the front of the basin. Come as close as you would like. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your Son, Jesus Christ, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ. <laughs> to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lisa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the people said, Amen. 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 to be alarmed. <laughs> Scarlet, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the people said, Amen. <laughs> that is for you, Scarlet. Scarlet, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen.
Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you in the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace and welcome to you all. Happy baptism of our Lord. January 13th, the year and the month is well underway. So glad to have you here. And what a great Sunday also to, to start with new life and new members of this body. Welcome to you all. If you are here as a guest, friend, or visitor, please make your presence known to us. The celebrant will be over here by, by the archangel following the liturgy. You could find out more about us from him then. There are also visitors' cards in the pews. You could fill one out, leave it in the alms basin at this past momentarily, or there are guest treasures in the very back. And if you leave a contact, uh, an email address, uh, a, a phone number, we'll be in touch just to welcome you and let you know more about our, our life and our congregation. Over the course of the weekend, we've been celebrating our Discovery Weekend for the teens in the congregation. About 50 of our youth from Friday night till about an hour ago have been here on the campus uh, worshiping and praying and, and playing games together, sort of learning more about what it means to be Christian community. It's been a, a blessed time with them, and they were part and parcel integrated into the 8.30 worship um, this morning. A special thanks to the many adults, uh, young adults, to Allison and to Hannah, our staff members, who helped develop that and put that on today. So grateful for their work and presence. The day will continue uh, this afternoon, the well, coffee minute after our dismissal and organ voluntary. Please linger for some fellowship. This afternoon at 2 p.m., we have a burial liturgy for Michael Tidwell, one of our own who died in this past week. Wherever you may be, if you can't be here, stop at 2 if you would and say a prayer for the repose of his soul and the consolation of his family. And then the day will conclude at 6 p.m. with breaking bread at 6. The Pierce family and I will be working together to provide music, and Matthew will be the worship leader. As the week unfolds, uh, we will have returned to our normal schedule with a breaking, excuse me, with the Scripture Saints and Song on Wednesday afternoon, and Journey in Faith will begin meeting again on Wednesday evenings. One of the things I want to call to your attention, we start our annual parish meeting next week. It runs over two Sundays. Next week, names for vestry class of 2022 will be placed in nomination. An opportunity following the 8.30 a.m. liturgy is given the congregation to, to nominate from the floor if you wish to augment the slate that's been created by the nominating committee. And then polls will be open and open across the morning. So you'll have opportunity here, the 11 o'clock congregation, to vote as you come to church or, or to vote as you leave church not and. Uh, but please, I ask you to pray for those whose names have been placed in nomination. I name them aloud now. John Bridges, Elise Duggar, Dave Hansen, Jill Meese, Brooks Smith, Pete Stringer, Andrea Tucker, Ben Turnage, Verena Wilsey, and Ellen Wright. I've become aware over the years that there's a measure of vulnerability when one accepts nomination expresses a willingness to be nominated and serve on a vestry. There's a measure of vulnerability in putting yourself before the congregation. I invite you in that spirit to pray for those who allowed their names to go in nomination. Uh, 
it will be on the following Sunday, the 27th, that the business session of our annual parish meeting will be conducted. Sign-ups, very important in your announcement sheet. We've been announcing the women's retreat sign-up since last uh, November, but it's getting down to business now. It's almost time. If you haven't signed up and you plan to go, please do so now. Wisdom Weekend comes up at the end of the month. That's a chance for, for you to, uh, to study some more about the faith, and especially on the lines of the contemplative life. I invite you to look at that and to sign up for that as well. Our worship schedule will continue as customary, noting especially the Confession of St. Peter on Friday at 12.15. A final note. I'm sure that it's pained you and perhaps it's pained members of your household as much as it has me to watch as many in the country have suffered from the government shutdown. There are folks who are employed by the government who are now having a hard time making ends meet. I want to say to you, if you are such a household or you have a friend where that's the case, that the clergy discretionary funds of Christ Church Cathedral stand available to you. The first priority is to meet utility bills, so please pass any need you may have or need of a friend you may have on to us. Likewise, if you've wondered where and how you might make a difference and support those who are suffering and in need, please know that likewise, the clergy discretionary funds are available to receive donations that will underwrite that support. Please pass that word on. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.